No, this isn't some leapfrog children's toy two-in-one. Behold one of the embers that gave rise to the netbook forest fire of the late 2000s. The X-01 was a complete x86 netbook rumored to be sold for dirt cheap at release and ran Linux out of the box. Sound familiar? This little green machine ran on a hype train that surprisingly didn't crash and burn, though some of its passengers mysteriously went missing along the way, and all the passengers ended up with dysentery after indulging in the complimentary tap water. It's 2007. The average price of a basic laptop is hovering around a thousand bucks, making new laptops unreachable for many in the US and almost everyone in developing countries. Enter Nicholas Negroponte, director of the Media Lab at MIT and the founder of the One Laptop Per Child Association. This is the association that brought this innovative and affordable little machine to life. The idea behind it was to develop a durable, cheap learning platform with a FOSS philosophy behind it to distribute to educators and students in developing nations. It was also available in the US through the Give One Get One initiative where you could buy two of these for a little under 400 bucks, one laptop would be sent to you, and the other would be donated to a student in need. With that pricing in mind, that meant one of these PCs cost around 200 bucks at the time of release in 2007. This was double the price that Negroponte announced during his 2006 TED Talk, where he touted that one laptop per child would distribute a $100 laptop. Even so, it's still really impressive what they were able to fit into this machine for only $200. And what's even more impressive is how well their operating system, which is based on Fedora, runs on this minimal hardware. For a processor, you're stuck with a single core AMD geode running at 433 MHz paired with 256 MB of RAM. Storage is kept on 1 GB of SLC NAND flash, and for a display, you get a 7.5 inch TFT display with separate indoor and outdoor viewing modes. Now, we really need to talk about some of the features on this laptop because it is packed with some really pragmatic features that are really draw dropping when you take into account its price and the dual mode display stood out to me as the most interesting. When you're inside, the display works as what is perceived as a 1024 by 768 LED backlit panel. Step outside and the screen appears as grayscale at a resolution of 1200 by 900 for better visibility in the bright sunlight. This is the first time I have ever seen anything like this. And to be honest, I don't know a lot and could not find much on the way they implemented this. My best guess as to how this works is that direct light on the screen illuminates pixels that you would not see in normal indoor lighting environments. But that's just a really far out guess. I mean, I couldn't find any patent information or any uh, papers regarding, you know, TFT dual uh, display mode technology. So if anyone has links to papers or patents on this type of screen, toss them in the comments section because I'm sure everyone would love to read up more on it and I would definitely like to look into it a little bit more. Other interesting features include a spill-proof keyboard, stylus pad, integrated gamepad, 640x480 camera, along with built-in microphones, long-range Wi-Fi, and mesh networking, which really didn't work all that well and was dropped in later versions. And this design just makes a lot of sense. There's a handle in the back that makes it easy to carry around when folded and unfolded, the outer case is really durable. There's actually another TED Talk where Negroponte just takes these XO-1s and starts throwing them around the stage without any second thought. There's a textured pattern on the outside for enhanced grip, and it converts to a tablet, which would lead you to believe it's touchscreen, but it's not. Your only inputs while in tablet mode are the buttons on the front face. Now, Negroponte did state that while it's folded over, it could be used as a television, which is what I would guess these two smaller holes are next to the handle. Now off to a little side tangent. The prototypes for the XO had a built-in hand crank to use as a secondary power source. There's actually a video clip where the UN Secretary General goes to use the hand crank and it breaks off. Now, those were prototypes, so I'm not surprised, but it definitely made for an awkward situation. And as you can see, the hand crank did not make it to production, though an external hand crank that could clamp to a table was initially offered. Back to the XO-1. 
For I.O., we have three USB 2.0 ports, an SD card reader, power jack, and headphone and microphone jack. It's not a lot of I.O., but it's really all you need for a basic machine like this, and taking into account the machine's size, it's approximately 9.5 by 9 by 1.3 inches. That's a decent amount of ports for a small machine like this. I thought it was an interesting choice not to include Ethernet on this. Maybe that has something to do with the fact that this was targeted towards developing countries and Wi-Fi tends to be uh, a little bit more prominent in those. Uh, and I should also note that there is no video output on this machine, which means your only option is to use the integrated display. And the display did receive a little bit of criticism when it was released, but honestly, it's not that bad to use. The grayscale thing takes a little bit of getting used to because if you take this laptop to an indoor area that's too bright, the colors will wash out and it's not a pleasant viewing experience, but the display quality is completely acceptable, especially for a budget machine. Moving on, to general usability, the keyboard works, but there's almost zero feedback from these mushy green membranes. Type faster than 15 words per minute, and you'll start to miss keys. The tiny battery in this thing will give you around three hours of use, and the operating system breaks a lot of traditional computing paradigms, which is fine if you've never used a computer before, but if you have had the privilege of using Windows, Mac OS, or a mainstream Linux distro, it's going to take you 10 to 20 minutes to get acquainted with our wonky friend here. Though the system is usable, there's not a lot of headroom. This OS, which is just Fedora with the Sugar Educational UI slapped on top of it, uses about 150 megabytes of RAM at idle leaving very little left for the many open source applications the X01 shipped with out of the box. The button to the top right of the X01's keyboard opens the View Navigator. You have the option to view surrounding network devices, nearby OLPC groups, the homepage, or any applications you have open, which is usually only one due to RAM limitations, as I talked about earlier. Almost all the apps are educational oriented, and most fare pretty well on this platform, Though, I ran into a couple that would not open, such as the TamTam Tam Jam app. A basic web browser is also included. It's dated, so some web content won't open correctly, and you can forget about video streaming. But if you're just trying to look up the latest news or read a Wikipedia article, it's responsive enough for that. If you can't stand using Sugar, a terminal application is also included, so you can just knock everything out through Bash if that's more your speed. There was also some collaboration with Microsoft who was in the process of introducing their unlimited potential program where governments could buy a $3 Windows XP software bundle. Limited field trials of Windows XP on the XO-1 started in January of 2008, and from what I can tell, some Windows XP units were shipped outside the US, though the OLPC website does not make this clear, so take that with a grain of salt. And where did all those missing passengers go? Plans for both the X02 and the X03, successors to the X01, fell through and were instead substituted by modest revisions to the X01's hardware. There was an X04, which included an option for a touchscreen, but it was never sold to US consumers. <coughs> <coughs> oh, my, oh god, my throat's a uh, salt flat over here. Can I get some of that, that dysentery water? The X01 is not without quirks. On earlier revisions, it's really easy. Oh god. <coughs> I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> on earlier revisions, it's really easy to brick one of these. If the clock battery dies on early models, the operating system won't boot, and on the oldest firmware, the screen won't turn on. The clock battery is replaceable, but getting to it is non-trivial. First, the side panels need to be removed, then the screen bezel, then the screen, and finally, you can access the four screws that hold the back panel in place. This is doable, but not an intuitive process for those in developing nations. And granted, the OLPC initiative still has a ton of documentation online for the X01, though this does not do much good if the end user has no means of accessing it. Despite these hiccups, in the end, Negroponte had succeeded in producing an affordable, rugged, and practical computer for those who lack computing resources in the US and abroad. The OLPC initiative prompted similar movements from large companies such as Intel's Classmate PC and the revolution in affordable consumer laptops, the ePC. Now, nowhere in this video did I claim that this was one of the best netbooks ever created, but it's definitely, in my opinion, one of the most interesting. I mean, just look at this design. It looks completely alien. When you think of a netbook, you do not think of this. And I think how outside the box this project went with redesigning a netbook is really 
cool. There's a lot more history behind this project and even more features about this netbook that I was not able to cover in this 10 minute video. For example, some of the really neat power management stuff that they had to do uh, with this laptop to give it additional battery life. There is a lot here. This is probably a netbook that you could take and write a 20 page research paper on easily. But that is going to be about it for this video, guys. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and drop a comment down in the comments section. A big thanks to our uh, Patreon supporters. Oh, also, if you're interested in checking out the seller that I bought this laptop from, I picked up this laptop for 39 bucks plus shipping off eBay. The seller's link will be down in the description. Additionally, HD images are up on our archive site. So if you want to get a better look at this laptop, the link is in the description. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.